Greetings everyone. Welcome to part 7, the final part in my TRS-80 Model 16B restoration. Or at least hopefully the final part. In tonight's video we're going to look at the 68,000 boards. So if you watched my very long part 6 with the troubleshooting and restoration efforts that were brought about by LSDOS, I did try to boot Xenix with the 68,000 boards without success. But what we're going to do tonight is I've pulled the boards out already, we're going to look over the boards, I've done a few things to them already, just some cursory things that I figured you didn't need to see another time lapse of. And then we'll take a look at putting them back in the machine now that I've done that, that cursory look over. And we'll talk about the board configuration and then we'll power it up and see how the diagnostics go. I'm probably going to do the 68000 board itself and one of the memory boards first and we'll just see if we can get the thing to work without complaining and then we'll revisit the second board. So let's get to it. So just a little sidebar here. I cut this out of the last video because it was so long, but I had set up this little fan behind it because the turbo fan was uh, off, of course, and the case wasn't together. So I still felt like the card cage was getting warm, so I set up this fan here to blow into the card cage. And you can see the cards are out. So let's look at the cards. Alrighty, so looking at the 68,000 board first, uh, we had a couple of things to do here. Uh, you can see the deoxit here on the table, and I've got some rubbing alcohol. Um, it turned out there was a splotch of something between this cap here and, what is this guy? Oh, yep, C37. So between the ceramic cap and C37, the ceramic cap's number is underneath it, so I'm not sure who we, what its number is, but that kind of crusted up the traces too. So I used a little um, alcohol and a brush to kind of get those off. And I did, was able to get it off. The other thing I did, I did deoxid the connectors on the, uh, this connector on this board when I did the card cage in the previous video. For this one, I, I did remove these cables, ran some deoxid in them, and then I also pulled off the um, IDC end and I ran some deoxid in there, cleaned them out, and let them dry. So this board is, I think, ready to go. And then we have the two memory boards. So each of these are, these are the boards that can take either 128K or 256K. In this case, they're both configured with 256K of memory. And all the jumper configurations are still the same. I, have, I need to look up and see what these do. Um, but I'm going to leave them as is for now. And if we have problems, that'll be the first place we look. Uh, this first set of dip switches here, or the only set of dip switches, but this um, first one is configured to be the first 256K uh, bait range of addresses in memory. So from 0 to 3 FFFF. FF. Um, that's switch 1 off, switch 2 on, and switch 3 off, the rest you don't care. This other board is same thing, switch 1 off, switches 2 and 3 on, and the other switches don't care. That is the setting for the second 256k range of, of the memory map that would be 40000 to 7 FFFF hex of course so what i'm going to do now is uh, having cleaned up the edges again the idc connectors and the, the card edge connectors and the cables and gotten that little bit of schmutz off the board i'm going to drop this in uh, and see what happens so let's put these boards in and then we'll test it out Okay, as I mentioned, I'm going to go down a, a slot or two. Um, I have a few slots to work with. I'm going to start with just the initial uh, 1256K memory board and the 68000 board, see if we get some successful tests with that, and then we'll move on to the other board. So, um, what I'm going to actually do is go give it one gap, one slot gap, and I'm putting the memory board in first because this way I can put the CPU board in with the cables already attached to it. Okay, and here comes the CPU board. And with that extra gap, I have a space for the other 256K memory board. Okay. Make sure I'm not lined up. Ooh, that's in. And we'll just attach you. And this one goes on a little harder. There we go. Okay, we're all in. Let's reattach this. This thing's a little bit of a pain in the butt with the case on it, actually. I don't love it. Because you got to line up the screw hole here. Alright, since the machine's going to be worked on, I'm just going to put the one side in. And this is really just 
for the grounds. The video and keyboard grounds need to connect to this, so that's why they're in. Make sure all these connectors are tight. And let's go around to the other side and start up the diagnostics disc. All right, here we are back in the diagnostic program. I'm gonna start with Z80 mode diagnostics to start. We're gonna just go to Diag 16 for the comprehensive diagnostics. Now, if we get any test passes or things look kind of good, I'll probably have to come back and run some long tests on these, but let's just see what we get here. I'm gonna do the quick 68,000 memory test. Ooh, we got a pass, okay. I wonder if something is, uh, or was wrong with the interface cable. Um, I mean, the other slot could have been an issue, so I might want to try the other slots and just make sure I don't have an issue. But that is a little telling. So either the goop on the board, on the CPU board, I'd have to see what that part of the circuit really does, or um, some oxidation on the cables caused this to fail. But so far, this thing is passing the quick memory test for the first 256K. Okay. Um, let's try a long one. All right, let's do uh, a couple of other tests here. Do the bus arbitration test. Passes, okay. Let's do the DMA test. Okay, uh, let's do the refresh test. All right, that's very good, okay. Back in. See if I can get any of the menus, the 68,000 mode test to work. Um, let's do the quick checkerboard test. I've had mixed luck with these tests. Okay. Test passed. Ah, oh, drop me out to Tristos. Ready. Yeah, there's no. Oh, we're waiting for drive B. Oh, I got a, there's a jet disc in there I have to eject. That's why it's acting funny. When it started up, it took a second. It's been waiting for drive B, or we'll, we'll drive one. We gotta turn that off. All right, let's go back to menu 68. All right, let's try the interrupt test. It says good things. I got a 68,000 program to execute. all received. I bet I can hit a hold on that. Oh, I can. Excellent. Okay. 68,000 diagnostics, 68,000 mode again. Modified address test. Quick modified address test, not thorough. Let's go with that. Okay, this is good. So, given where this is, I want to try something. Um, rather than go through the whole battery again, I couldn't get Xenix to work before, and that's because it couldn't valid, it couldn't verify memory. Two tests, and we passed, and we're back to Tristos ready. Anyway, um, naturally, I'm going to have to come back and let this run for a while and really do it. But since this is working, I want to see if, with only the one memory board in, if the Xenix install disk will boot. So we've now mounted that and we're going to hit reset. Okay. Well, we're further than last time. Ooh. Oh, use this root disk. Oh, 
Okay, no, I don't have my Fred yet. <laughs> very well. Proceeding the standard single user shell. I like the very well. Um, okay. So it looks to me like Xenix is up and running on this, at least with the first memory board only. That's good. All right, so in the first set of tests pass on both the 68,000 on the interrupt side, on the memory side, that first set of diagnostics seems to be passing and it seems to be working. So this is very good. I imagine this is a very minimal install, so there's not going to be anything on here, but okay, excellent. All right. So that gives me hope that when my Fred arrives, at the very least, I can make a 256K system out of this while I try and figure out uh, what I want to do. But I want that 512K to work so I can play with a multi-terminal board more. But either way, um, and there's going to have to be a little more testing in the background. I'll probably just leave this thing on at some point. This says good things. Um, when I ran the Xenix boot disk last time and it blew up, I was a little worried that I was in for a rabbit hole. So at least if I am, it'll just be on one of the boards. So now the question is, does it start blowing up when I put the other board in? Um, if it doesn't, was it slot related? Do I have a, a bad slot in the system? Which is entirely possible. So, uh, with that in mind, I'm going to uh, halt sys. I'm going to shut this down. And then what I'm going to do is put the other board in. And we'll try this again. Alright, second card installed. Back to the diagnostics. We're going to start out with Z80 mode again. And let's go to Diag16. And I'm just going to do the quick 68,000 memory test. All right, now you see the top of memory is now 512K, 7FFFF. Oh, we have some issues in the top half. OK. So the RAM, it's not all the addresses, it's just a bunch. Uh, the, the card I just put in starts at 40000 hex. And that's telling me that we have some errors, um, a number. So I'm going to have to take a note. I'm going to run that again. I just want to get the, the list of where this happened. So I want to hit, snap a picture here of the when the addresses start coming up. I'll just smack hold here, and we'll take a picture so I can figure out what the addresses are, and we can try and track them down. Picture of that. This one not looking right at the light. Okay. Um, one of the first things I'll probably do is actually re-socket all the DRAM on that board and the, any other socketed chips just to make sure that they're all good and put some deoxid on them. To be honest, I'll probably do it on the other memory board anyway just to be sure while we're here. And then we can see where we go from there. But with one memory board and the 68000 board, the system passes all the initial diagnostics I've done and boots up to Xenix 135 shell from the installation disk. So at the very least, when my Fred 4.8 comes, I can turn this into a working Xenix system initially uh, while I figure out the other board. But in the meantime, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with that second board, shall we? All right, and looking at the RAM board, um, nothing really stands out as being in terrible shape. But one thing I do notice is all these RAM chips are replaced with Texas Instruments 4164 parts. Um, the other board has the original Tandy RAM chips on them with the Tandy part numbers and the Tandy Corporation hourglass on them. So I don't know what that means, if anything, but they're all uniform. Um, so I don't know if this board was a problem in the past or that's just uh, something that was done to upgrade it or whatever, but that'll be one place to look. But I think what we're going to do, we have obviously the DRAM chips here and we've got some additional socketed um, some so additional socketed chips here that we're going to be dealing with. So the next step here is going to be to take them out with a socket puller, run some deoxid through the sockets, zhuzh them around in there, and put them all back in, and then we'll give them another try. And because it's the evening and it's my virtual Thursday tonight, because I'm off on Friday, I have a little wine. Classic computers and classic wine. Mmm. It's a nice vintage for a vintage computer project. All right, I'm gonna try and extract these.
right, I think that's it. I think it is uh, all deoxided. Jumpers haven't moved. I'm going to exercise each of these jumpers a little bit. Um, just for the sake of making sure that I've got a good connection here. Alrighty then. So we've resocketed all the RAM chips. They're all in the same order they were before. We've also resocketed the various bus controllers and latches and stuff. So we are going to give this about five minutes to air out. I want to make sure that it gets the full dry time. Deoxys says two minutes. I'm sure it's probably been about that, but I'm just going to wait a few more minutes. And once we're done with that, uh, we're going to plop it in the machine and see if it makes any difference. I'm about 30, 70 that it'll make a difference. I think it's probably not going to, and we're going to have to dig around a little more. So, on to the next. All right, now that the board's back in, um, I've given the deoxid about 10 minutes. I also went at it with a can of a compressed air and just shot the excess deoxid out and uh, swapped it up with cotton swabs before I let it sit for 10 minutes, just because I know it says you can use it after two minutes and you're supposed to be able to spray it right on, but I don't know, liquids, electronics. So anyway, the dive disc is mounted. We're going to see what happens. I think I still have that LS-DOS disc in the Lothrex drive piece, so this thing might stall for a bit. Oh, we got to fix the contrast here. We're going to do the quick memory test. And if I have to, um, I'll break my phone out and we can do an address comparison. But let's see how this goes. Single. Okay, so we have some failures. Let's see how they compare to before. Alright, so the fact that it's working like this, same exact result, I think that means that I can rule out the slots for now in the card cage. Um, this does not rule out the cable, so if I have to, we'll address that. I'm going to have to figure out where those lines come in on the memory boards, but the schematic should tell me that. Um, but I think the schematic should give me an idea of, of which group of DRAM we're talking about, of the four um, sets of eight that I worked on. So that's what's going to be next. We're going to take a look at the schematic, and then I'll go on from there. So I had a thought. Um, since I have a working board, I have, I mean, really two sets of things to kind of, I can use to eliminate the socketed chips pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is these latches, all four of these, the service manual all lists them as the same part, this Motorola part, but both the working and non-working board have a mix of uh, Motorola and some other parts there. It looks like AMD maybe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all four of these in the same order they are on the working board, this one, and s just put them in here, and I'm going to just leave these out. I'm not going to put them in the non-working board. And I'm going to address this to um, the first 256K range in the memory map from 0 to 3FFFF. If the board checks out fine, we're good. If it doesn't, then what I'm going to do is switch them back and we're going to try, I might actually just try and swap all the DRAMs and see what happens and see if either of those two fixes the issue because if I swap the DRAMs over I can do that in minimal time and the board will work or it doesn't and if it doesn't then I know I've got issues with some of the other support chips on the board and we can break out the scope and see what else is going on but if not I might be able to very quickly eliminate the issue just by replacing the socketed chips so that is our next step All right. So the broken 68,000 board has gotten the patches from the working one and has been addressed to the first 256K of the memory space. Let's see what happens. Nope, it's blowing up. Alrighty then. 
so we suspect we're not dealing with support chips on those four latches. So I'm going to return those back, and the next step is I'm going to swap the DRAM over, and we're going to see if that works. Back again with the original support chips back in place, the latches, and I have swapped the Tandy Corp labeled DRAMs in place of the Texas Instruments ones that were on the board, and the board is still addressed at zero to three FFFF. We're going to see what happens in a quick memory test. And it passes. Okay, so it looks like the board itself is fine. We might just have bad DRAM. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and see if I can get myself another set of DRAMs. I'm going to verify that the ones that were in there are the correct type. And then we're going to move on. But I have two complete passes already with no errors using the previously bad board. So this is good. I uh, saved myself a little bit of BS. Um, figured doing this with the socketed chips, since I had a working model, was a great way to do this. And if it didn't work, put the chips back in and the original places and be done with it. So that's excellent. When I get my new DRAM, I should have a fully upgraded 512K Model 16B. Okay, moment of truth. I'm going to get this power up. Right now, only one of the boards is installed. So I have the other board mapped to the 0 to 3 FFFF memory space, that's the first 256K of memory. And I will give this the short memory test. If this works, I think I know what's wrong, or at least I have a, a pretty educated guess as to what the issue was. Um, I'll note that um, this, this board actually was the board that was originally giving me problems. I swapped the Tandy RAM over to it, tried it out, and of course the board works. That ruled out the board, and that led me to the DRAM. And when I put the TI branded RAM that I got with the machine and the other board it started blowing up. So let's see what happens now. It would be really nice if this would work. We'll do the single test on the quick. It usually doesn't take this long to fail, so we'll see what happens. If this works, I'm going to flip over to the 68,000 side diagnostics. Ooh, hey! We have a pass. This is excellent. I'm going to let this go through all five passes of the quick memory test. Then we'll run the 68,000 side memory tests, because those will actually try and load the program into 68,000 memory and execute it. And that'll be a nice little test. So I think I know what the issue was. I think this was a question of DRAM refresh rate. Um, looking in the service manual, this machine is requires 128 refresh. And this RAM that I got with the card is 256. I came across something that showed me the TI parts as being 256, so I'm wondering if that would be the cause of this. I also have my own set of 4164 chips from TI floating around that also failed. I'd be really shocked if they were all bad, and given that it was through the entire address space, I, RAM refresh seems like a logical thing to me. So what we're going to do here is we're going to quit. Actually, let's do a couple others here. The long test I'll skip, so I'll do that on the, the 68,000 side. Let's do the DMA transfer. Good, 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 good. Okay, verification complete. Let's do the refresh test. Well, this is going. If these tests are successful, I'm going to stick this board back in place. Okay, no pattern decay yet. And the way that I'm going to, before I do that, I have to configure this board so that it is in the correct place in the memory map. So as you recall, this board is now 0 through 3 FFFF. So I need this to be 40000 to 7 FFFF, the top 512K memory. To do that, it's controlled on this style board. Um, I should note this is the older style RAM board for these. There's a newer one um, that's somewhat differently laid out. Um, and the switches mean different things on those boards. Those are the 256, or those are the 512K slash 1 meg boards like I have in my Model 16. Hey, this worked. The way that you do this is switch 2 here determines whether the board is enabled or disabled. If switch 2 is off, the board won't work, whether it's in the chain or not. Switch 2 is on and all the others are off, that puts it at the base of the address space. So all I have to do is flip switch 3 on, and now 
with switch 1 don't care, the rest of these switches off, switches 2 and 3 on, this is now going to be in the correct place in the memory map. So I'm going to set that down, and we're going to do some of the 68,000 tests in 68,000 mode. Menu 68. And let's do the checkerboard, quick checkerboard RAM test. I'm just going to do the quick tests. We're going to have to do a bigger and more comprehensive burn-in on this. But this is much further than I've gotten up to this point. Okay, I'm going to load it. We're passing. Great. Okay. I love that some of these tests just dump you right back out. Now, the nice thing is that was actually a, a 68,000 programming running from 68,000 RAM. So let's do... Actually, let's do the quick interrupt test. If that's happy, then I'm going to probably be happy with this enough to put the, the board back in now. See program loaded. It's now in 68,000 memory and executing. And these, if you can see, are all received. I'm hitting the hold key here. So this is good. We have successful interrupts. All right, I'm going to power this down. We're going to put the board in the back. We're going to power it up. I'm going to do a couple more quick memory tests, see if it sees the entire address space, see if both boards are simpatico together, working together, all kumbaya-like. And if they are, we're in some really good shape. All right, so to make this easier, I disconnect these cables from the back of the board. Just be careful here, because then it's easier to get the board in without flexing these cables too much. And this is my turbo fan, turbo fan mod. Since I have the fan out, but these card cages still tend to get a little hot, I decided to augment the cooling with an auxiliary auxiliary fan. Okay, I'm just slide that in there gently. Make sure I'm in there. There we go. Okay, so now we'll just kind of line these up. What I like to do is line these both up loosely on the connectors, 38 special, um, and then push them on so you don't over flex them too much. I'll we'll go on a little rough. There we go. Nice bite in these cables actually. Perfect. Okay. All right, the boards are in. Let's go back around front, power it up, and see if we see the whole address space if it passes the memory tests. We're back, and we have the combination to the air shield. So my next step with this might actually be there's a conversion process to convert one of these memory cards to the style used in my Model 16 with the 6000 upgrade. That is a minimum of 512K and a maximum of a meg on one board. And I'm thinking about doing that mod. So I have to get some clarifications on it, but I have some documentation. So if that's something you'd like to see, perhaps that's something we will do. Um, there's also a couple of other projects for this machine, um, one of which is sitting right here next to it. We'll cover that in a future video. Let's do the quick memory test. Single. Okay, well, we see the entire top, the top of RAM, so at least the card is configured correctly. That's 7FFFF, that's 512K. I know that very well from my Color Computer 3 experience. Come on, Schwartz. Come on, Schwartz. I don't have the ring, but he found it in a Cracker Jack box, so it's not like it matters. Hey, look at this. I'm just waiting for this test to pass, and we're going to do one of the 68,000 memory tests. So I'm going to do that checkerboard test on the 68,000 side. Very good. And we're going to go exit to Tristan. Let's go to mine. Ah, this is very good. Really happy to have this machine going again. Checkerboard test. Xboot 1. Should say program loaded in a minute here, and it should actually run. Very good. All right, so I have further burn in to do on this. Some longer tests, continuous tests, and the thing and the like. But from my vantage point, this machine is now fully restored. Um, it's now functioning with the full complement of memory. I am considering the notion of upgrading the one of the two RAM boards to a one meg board. So there's some trace cutting and some other bodging that has to be done to make that happen. I've got some, I did actually buy the uh, support latches and things for that. So if that's something you'd like to see, uh, let me know. 
that will probably be a project down the road. But for right now, I'm just waiting for my Fred 4.8, which is stuck in customs in California someplace. So when I get that, we'll move on to Xenix. Um, I don't have the upgraded PAL in this, but I don't really need it if I want to run Xenix 135. Or I could run Xenix 3. Um, there's a version out on the archive that I believe does not require the PAL. I'm speaking from memory, so if I'm wrong, I'll just point it out in the next video. I'm wrong all the time. So thank you for watching the series, and please stick with me when I do future videos on this 16B and all of my other Tandy computers. Thanks for watching.